Hello, Work Life Warriors. I hope you're doing well. Happy 2023. How are you? What did you do for the new year? Did you bring the new year in in a big way? Were you home sleeping? What did you do for this new year? I enjoyed myself. I went out. Um, I went over to a friend's house who was having a party. We had a good time. We did some um, fireworks. We ate. We drank a little. Played some games. It was so much fun. I hope you enjoyed your new year. I hope you brought it in doing something that you love, something fun and playful. I hope you really enjoyed your time off. Today is Monday, so that means everyone is going back to work. I wanted to record this video yesterday, but I just kind of wanted to be for a day. Uh, and so I'm recording it today. I normally do my book reviews on Sunday. So the next book review will come out on Sunday um, of this week. So I just wanted to stop has, um, this is the first or the first book, uh, review of the year, which again was supposed to be yesterday. And I want to start off by doing just a uh, review of the books that I read last year. Um, as you know, I try to read a book a week. Reading is so beneficial to you. It helps with stress management. It is brain training. It helps you to go into something um, and visualize what it is that you're reading or helps you to unpack how what you're reading uh, influences your life. And so reading is so beneficial. It helps to build your vocabulary. It helps to give you confidence. It reduces stress. Um, it's a great grounding technique. Uh, it is a way for you to entertain yourself, depending on what type of books you read. I tend to read more self-help books, so not really that entertaining, but entertaining because I love myself and I'm working on myself. And it's very interesting to take the literature or what I'm reading and try to apply it to my life or even just to kind of reflect on um, experiences that I've had in relation to what I'm reading. So books are so good for you. They're so healthy. Uh, it's a way to ground you, to give you the tools you need. You can always read about what you need to know, what you need to learn, what you want to do, where you want to go. Um, it's a great tool. Cool. And it's so beneficial if you do it daily. So I try to read at least an hour a day in the mornings before I leave my house. I wake up, I read something that's beneficial to me, whether it's something um, uh, professionally or self-help book. And so I read them every day or read a book every day for an hour. Um, which normally equals about a book a week. And so at the end of the year, I normally, my goal is 52 books a year. Now, recently, <laughs> I haven't been doing, uh, I've been very busy with work. So I haven't been reading as much as I normally do. Uh, last year was my worst year ever in the last, what? 10 years. That was my worst year ever. I was starting a new project. So I devoted most of my time to that and I did not read as much as I normally do. So last year, um, I only read 25 books and I really felt um, disappointed in myself that um, I wasn't able to read more books. Now, although I was handling a bigger project, um, and I made the active choice not to read in addition, focus all my attention on that. I kind of miss, or I feel like it was a missed opportunity. And so at the end of the year, I said next year, I am going to, you know, make up for it. <laughs> I'm going to work extra hard to make sure that I get 52 books by the end of the year. Um, that so that I can at least accomplish one of my goals. I put it on my um, vision board. I put it on my 24 by 24 list or 23 by 23 list for last year. Um, I put it on my daily goals. And so it's something that I would like to see myself accomplish. Now, this year I did better than 25, but I did not exactly make 52. This year I read 41 books. And I learned so much from from those forty one books. Although I would have liked to, I would have liked to get to fifty two. I was eleven books short of my goal, uh, which again is still a big improvement. What is that? Sixteen books from last year. So I still improved. Um, so this year, I, I know for a fact I'm going to use you as my accountability partners. Um, so I'm going to make sure that I'm posting every Sunday. I'm doing my book review that will force me to um, read my books and not neglect them and force uh, me to come and do these videos and have a discussion with you about what I learned and how it applies to life. So 
I'll just, this is my book list. Um, I'll just read to you the books that I read this year. I always start my year off and month off with reading Who Moved My Cheese and I Moved Your Cheese. Um, I read about, I would say about 10 books uh, that are the same each year. So the first two to three months, I read the same three books that I think are so beneficial. Um, and my favorite two books, um, Who Moved My Cheese and I Moved My Cheese, I read those every single month. Um, so I read that. I read The Mismeasure of Woman, Man Searches for Himself. I read an African-American poetry book, um, E.K. Homo or Each Homo. I've heard it's um, many different ways. Building a Learning Organization, Organizational Learning Theory, Culture and Practices, Who Moved My Cheese Again. I did that 12 times this year, so I won't say that again. Rebels and Demons, Assessment and Evaluation, Design and Method, In Search of Color Everywhere, a collection of African-American um, poetry, The Go-Giver, Anti-Fragile, Understanding Research Methods, uh, Animal Farm, Cognitive Surplus, Creativity and Generosity in a Connected Age. I read The Big Leap Again. The Picture of Dorian Gray, The Power of a Humble Life Again, Three Magic Words Again, Daring Greatly, Dying for a Paycheck, Teaming, uh, Internal and External Consultant, Consulting Success, Humble Consultant, uh, Learning to Lead, Think and Grow Rich. That's one that I read every year. The Four Agreements, another one I read every year. The Circle of Fire, uh, the Essential Guide to Your N.A. Type, The Empower Path, published in, I read a little bit of Critical Conversations. I read that every single year. I did not fully read the book uh, this year, but I started it. And that's one that I read every year so I can improve on my um, communication skills. So those are the 41 books that I read this year. And I want to do a top five. And fortunately for you, I have... Um, three of the books of the top five. So I'll talk about three of the books, two of them. Um, one was a library rental and the other one was a PDF. So I can't really um, pick up notes from that, but I'll go through my top five from my 41 books that I read this year, other than the ones that I read each year. These are the, you know, new books that I read this year that I think are, you know, worth discussing. I've done videos on all of these books actually. Um, so check out, check it out um, on my YouTube. I've done um, at least five, but some of these books, like I think Rebels versus, I mean, Rebels and Devil and Man Searches for Himself and maybe Dying for a Paycheck. I maybe have like two or three or four videos for them. So just check out my YouTube where I do a deep dive on these books. But right now, I'm just going to name my top five. And then I'm going to talk about a couple of pieces um, from the top or the three books that I do have from the top five. So my top five this year, and I'm not ranking them um, based on numbers or in order. I'm just the five books that I thought were extremely helpful in helping me to grow and develop this year. Um, as you know, I pick a word each year. My word this year or last year was empower. So the top five books that I think empowered me out of the 41 books I read are Man Searches, uh, Man's Search for Himself, Rebels and Devils, Animal Farm, Dying for a Paycheck, and Daring Greatly. Now, as you can see, I have three of them that I'm going to talk to you about um, today, and I've taken so many notes on them. I'm just going to go through and talk about the highlights um, from these books. I want to just do a brief um, overview of, you know, what I thought was important and how it helped to grow, push, and develop me this year. So the first one, Man Searches for Himself. This was such, 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 such a good book. I absolutely love it. Um, it is about how to get back to yourself. It ultimately boils down to human beings have two needs, the need to be taken care of and the need to be responsible. And it is our responsibility to balance the two, right? A lot of us um, decide to fulfill these needs by letting others take care of us, um, 
as far as like financially or socially. And then um, the way that we feel the need to be, to be responsible is we have our own family, uh, we have children, we have people in our lives and we take responsibility for their lives, right? And I just think it's such a interesting concept when you think about it because um, I think it should be flipped. I think uh, more so your need to be responsible should be how you show up in this world, uh, regardless of what people think and what, what the rules of societies um, or the society you live in is. Uh, if you're not hurting anyone, it is your responsibility to show up and be your best self in the world, regardless of the rules. And then your need to be taken care of um, should come from the people that you surround yourself with. So if they're surrounded by pe the people who feel who fulfill their needs, um, taking care of them, and then also they're around you and they're fulfilling your needs of taking care of you, then you create a community, right? Instead of it just being, um, I will allow, I'll clock in, do my nine to five, come home and allow all the business and inner workings that allow that company to run. Uh, and I'm taking my hands out of, I'm just focusing on my particular part, nine to five, come home and not focus on anything else. And then I'll be responsible for my children. Um, I think that that's causing a lot of problems that we have in the world because um, you, many parents are taking the responsibility of who they would be in the world and projecting it on their child, right? So they don't even really see children as humans. They don't see their child as a, you know, autonomous individual. And in their mind, their child is just an extension of them, right? And while I don't have children and I can't really understand what that would feel like to, to birth the kid and it becomes, an, you know, came from you and you're responsible for it. I really think that we have to do more about being responsible in this world to set our values, to, you know, focus on integrity above our all, as opposed to running and controlling someone else's life or being responsible for someone else's life as a way to not be responsible for yours. And so um, I look around and I see many adults who are not really responsible, who are not making uh, responsible decisions in life, uh, decisions that they will later regret decisions that hit their self-esteem, self-value, self-worth, which means that you won't show up in the world if you don't feel worthy, if you don't feel valuable, if you don't have the esteem, you'll take whatever is given to you. And we see a lot of that today. We are trading our responsibilities for conveniences, for comfortability, for entertainment, and we're not growing, stretching, developing, pushing people to be better. We're not focusing on our children, being decent human beings, being valuable human beings to themselves first before um, being valuable to society. We're not focusing on all of the things that build character and we're more focused on personality. And so if you know your personality is, is the type that doesn't want to do work and not really responsible, it is in your best interest to work on your character so that you're responsible in life, so that you're picking where you want to go, who you want to be, what you want to do, and why. It's so important to do that. Um, in the book, he also also talks about the greatest fear, which always confuses me. You would think that with human beings, the greatest fear is death, but that is not. The greatest fear is living. Living an authentic life, you are an individual. Yes, you belong to a family, a group, a society, but you are an individual. As an individual, you should invest in yourself so that the group benefits, so that everyone that you come across, everyone that you have to interact with, every experience that you had, you're adding value, you're benefiting, you're um, helping other people benefit, and it creates some sort of reciprocity, right? And so how can you be afraid of the one gift you're giving, which is life? We're given life. How can you be afraid to live? How can you be more afraid of living than death? 
me personally, when I was young, I was so afraid that I would die with a whole bunch of regrets that I made a promise to myself that I'm living life with no regrets. And so I show up for myself every single day. I do the hard things. I don't take the easy road, even if that means that there's going to be consequences, then I take the consequences. But ultimately, my goal is to master myself. And so I have to be accountable and responsible to, you know, what I value. I have to, you know, practice integrity, even when the rest of the world doesn't necessarily understand what it is that I'm doing and why. And so please make the decision to live. It is the best thing um, you can never do. Now, a lot of us are just walking dead. We're zombies. We're, we're like robots. Um, we're not necessarily focusing on our mental health or our emotional health, but it's so important to do that because uh, in order to live, you have to be able to feel, you have to be aware, you have to be conscious, you have to, you know, be proactive, you have to be ready to make decisions that can benefit your life. And if you just, you know, on autopilot, which most people are just on autopilot, we do the same things every day, we get up, we try to work, we, um, the weekends are the same, the evenings are, everything is the same and we're on autopilot and it's in our best interest to figure out what are the things that make us feel alive? What are the things that make us feel happy, joyous, wonder, ah, creativity? Find those things and do them every day. That is the only way that you can be alive. That is the only way you can face your fears. That is the only way that you can enjoy this one life you have because we do not get another life. And so it's in our best interest to live this one life, to have a good time, to grow, stress, develop, and enjoy yourself while you're doing it. So overall, when it's saying man searches for himself, it's just saying like you, we were human beings are forever juvenile, right? We go as juveniles. Oh, I can't wait to be an adult. Once we become an adult, we go out into this world and we forget what really matters, right? And so searching for yourself is bringing it full circle, going back to the things that really matter to you, going back to the things that make you feel your best um, self, make you feel like your best self, make you feel like your funnest self, your peaceful self, your joyous self, all of the positive aspects of who you want to be. You want to do the work that you're bringing that, you know, into the world every single day. You're waking up with the intention. You're doing the work. You're practicing. Um, you are living and not just on autopilot. You are living and not just existing. You are living and not just here. You are living and not just obeying. You are here. You are making the decisions. You're moving in the ways that benefit you. And as you do that, you learn more about your internal world. You learn more about your wants, needs, your likes, your dislikes, your strengths, your weaknesses, all these things that make you who you are. And as you're doing the work and you're you're awakening to who you really are, you're doing the things that you love, then, then eventually you will find yourself. And that's what this book is all about, being alive and making the decision to be responsible for your life while balancing um, having someone be responsible for you, right? Because it is a human need. So I just thought that this was a very great, great, great book to read. Um, if you are into that type of reading, I would say read this book. It's such a great book. Okay. Oh, no, no, no. I actually, I'm going to have to add another one to this list because I forgot. Anti-Fragile was the number one book I read this year that helped me in so many ways. Um, I absolutely love this book and I realized that I did not put it on my list, but this is the number one book. If I had to pick a number one book, this is the number one book that thoroughly influenced me this year. I learned so much about myself. We talk a lot about resiliency and anti-fragility and resiliency are two different things. Anti-fragile is the idea that instead of um, something breaking you, it makes you strong. And it reminds me, or if you get a, you know, a rip, a hole, a tear, a crack, a break or anything, it makes you stronger. It reminds me of this idea. I can't think of the name of it, but it's like when you take dishes and, and bowls and plates and they have cracks in them and you fill them with gold. And then you have these beautiful, you know, plates or bowls with like traces of gold in them because the cracks were sealed with gold, right? So it's about like every crack from the experiences that you're having in life makes you more authentic, makes you more real. If you use it, it can make you more powerful. It's like 
Um, our conditioning puts us in marble. Think of us like the thinking man. All of our condition puts us in marbles and every in mar marble. And every time something happens, it, it's like a crack in the marble. And the more you're cracking open it, open the statue, the more of yourself you become, the more of your life experience becomes sacred to you. And you realize that nothing goes to waste. Everything that you're experiencing is meant to help shape you, mold you, push you. Um, help you grow and develop, be the person that you want to be. So you want to think of yourself as anti-fragile, that nothing in this life can break you because you can't be broken, but it can help you grow, expand, um, be your best self, see things differently. It's a way to know, failure is a way to know that I can't do it this way. So what other options do I have? Nothing is wasted. This experience is for you. Everything is happening for you, not to you. And with an uh, anti anti-fragile mindset, you realizing that every experience that you're having, every person that you meet uh, is leading you to the truest, most authentic version of yourself. If you're if you're open to receive it, if you're open to learn the lessons, to grow and develop it from it, to not label it good or bad, right or wrong, but just let it be. And just let, let it, uh, let you be, right? Let it um, fortify all of the things within yourself that makes you more of yourself in the best of yourself, right? And so I absolutely love this. I was going through such a hard time. I was thinking about making a great pivot in my life. I read this book and it revitalized me. It's a great book. If you have the chance to read about anti-fragile, please do it. I had so many red points in this. I think that I am going to start adding this book to uh, what I read every year. I have about 10 books or so that I read every single year. Um, I think that I'll add this one to it. I just, I had so many ideas from it in it, in, in itself, uh, just help shift my perspective, help me change what I think about the experience that we're having life in general. We always say, oh, you know, life is, is trash, you know, what's going on is trash. Um, but and, and, and even so, that may be the case, but it helps you to think of it as treasure trash and not just trash that, you know, needs to be thrown away or discarded or dismissed, but trash that you can take and turn it into something that's that's valuable to you. Uh, taking your life, your experiences, the things that you can and can't control and, and painting with it, basically making lemonade from what you can't control. And making sure that any experience, whether good or bad, adds value to you. Not deplete you, but add value to you. Instead of breaking you, splitting you, it makes you stronger. It gets strong. You will get stronger when you look at your challenges or your experiences as a way to grow, develop, and enjoy yourself. So by far, one of my favorite books. Um, yeah, great book. Dan Greatly. I had this book for such a long time. I've read all of Brene Brown's book. Oh, okay. Most of them. I think she had a, another one or two that came out recently. Um, that's on my list, but I hadn't had a chance. But I read this book. Finally, this was the last book of hers that I hadn't had a chance to read. And it was such a great book. I love Brene Brown. She talks about living um, an open, vulnerable, and authentic life by honoring your emotions, not hiding them, by working through them through them by reflecting, by understanding exactly what your emotional world is like and how you can uh, weed through that emotional world and use those things to help you, you know, push yourself to show up in this world, to be vulnerable, to be okay with emotions and things that don't feel good and not to always be comfortable, not to always look for the easiest convenient way. But sometimes you may have to get in the ring and get the sh knocked out you. Sometimes it's just what happens if you want to be a player in this world, if you want to dare greatly, you have to enter the ring. And the ring is not pretty. It is messy. It is hard. It is challenging. It is frustrating. It is all of these negative things alongside with your perspective, positive things, because the person in the ring knows that they are 
you know, an artist and they're creating the life that they want, even though it's hard and it's not always easy. You're not always TK, TKO in someone. You're not always in the best stance. You're not always taking the best jabs. You're not always doing everything right, but you're in the ring and you're playing and you're being authentically yourself and going out there and getting what it is you feel you want, need, deserve, and worthy of. So I absolutely love this book. I can see why it was a num the number one bestseller because you cannot obtain um, anything in life, including who you want to be, what you want to do, where you want to go without um, carriage. Carriage is something that is so beneficial to us that many of us lose uh, before we turn adults, we stop being courageous. We stop speaking out. We stop doing that, that thing. We stop going this place. As we age, we become painfully aware of all the ways that you can pass away, that life um, can throw you a curveball. And so we become less courageous. We stop trying new things. We stop doing new things. We stop going new places. New change becomes they become enemies to us. Some of the biggest enemies we have because we don't want, you know, change. We don't want to do anything different. We want to feel safe and um, tucked away. And we want to watch other people. We want to uh, watch other people. We want to live vicariously through other people and watch them as they're out there failing and falling and making moves so we can sit back and criticize and prove to ourselves, this is why I decided to play small. This is why I decided to be mediocre. This is why I decided to you know, follow the path that was already paid for me because it takes too much. It's too much effort um, to go out there and take the path less travel or to get in the ring. Uh, I don't I don't want the failure that comes along with learning something new, doing something new, trying something new. It's just much easier right here where I know. And a lot of us can can get used to that. And we can go through our whole lives until we hit our midlife crises where we're like, oh, you know, I haven't um, accumulated what I want. I haven't you know, done what I wanted to do. I'm not the person I wanted to be. My life is not what I wanted to be. And so it's a day-to-day. -day. You don't just wake up and all of those things happen. It's a day-to-day -day journey. You have to um, eat the elephant one bite at a time. So every day you have to wake up, you have to dare greatly, you have to be courageous, you have to you know, make a commitment to yourself that I'm going to be my best self. I'm going to go out in this world regardless of the consequences and be authentic. If I fail, I'm going to take it as a learning experience. I'm not going to quit. I'm not going to shy away. I'm going to be my best self. And if I'm not liked, if I'm not received, if I am rejected, then it is what it is. But at least I love me. At least I'm playing. At least I am picking carriage over comfortability. And I am showing up and showing out because I only have have one life to live and I do not, you know, want to be remorse, remorseful at the end of my life that I didn't accomplish what I wanted to accomplish. And so I wanted to be bold. I wanted to go out there. I wanted to dare greatly. I always said since we read Ralph M Emerson Waldo poem, I think when I was like in first to second grade and it talked about you know are you going to choose the path that's you know well traveled or take the path that's less traveled and even at six I realized that you know I, it would be more interesting more of an adventure more of an authentic experience to take the path less travel, right? It's less worn out. It's more opportunities for you to grow, develop, stretch, be, stretch, be who you want to be, to flex your creativity muscles. And so I've always des desired to be more of myself, even if that meant, you know, standing against the crowd, if it came with consequences. I, you know, always wanted to be my best self because I don't want to have regrets at the end of my life. And I don't necessarily have regrets about failures or mistakes. That's a part of the experience in order for me to do well, there are moments where I'm not doing well, right? And so ultimately, I thought that this was a really great book. And if you have it, it was sitting on my shelf for a long time. I suggest you read it. I got a lot of great ideas from it. And I would say that um, this year was a really good year for reading compared to last year, although I did not get my 52 
41 is progress and I am always happy about progress. And I can definitely tell the difference in my mindset and my thinking uh, and my habits and behaviors since reading the, these books. And ultimately, I feel like uh, pick, take your time and pick out the books that are, are going to help you develop, going to help you go where you want to go, be who you want to be, do what you want to do. It is up to you. It is your responsibility. No one else's. So go out there and manage your stress. Be the best that you can be. The world needs you. We are waiting on you to be your best self and add some much needed value in the world. So I hope this helps. Work Life Warriors, please share with me in the comments. What are your thoughts? What are your beliefs? Have you read the books that I've mentioned? Mention, um, what were your key takeaways from the books? Um, how have you incorporated them in your life? And if you have not read them, do you plan on reading them? Um, if you have them in your house, if not, are you going to order them? Are you going to listen to them on audio books? I mean, on I don't really listen to audio books, so I'm not sure what that's on. But are you going to listen to the audio book version of it? Um, as always, I well before we say that, I believe reading is best for you to get all of the stress management benefits you must read. But if you have to listen to get the knowledge, that works too. So um, I say do whatever makes you feel good, but also be practical about managing your stress because it stands in the way of all your goals and dreams. So I hope this helps and I will be here every Sunday. I am hoping that you all keep me accountable. Um, make sure that I am posting every Sunday a book review so that this year I can ultimately get to uh, my 52 books. I think I could do it. 11 books uh, more. And I had a very busy year this year. So just adding 11 more books, I believe that I can do that. I believe that I can hit 52 this year. Uh, this is my third year in a row not making it to 52. If I'm not mistaken, the year before I had like 44 and the year before that I had like 36. It's a struggle. But it's a struggle that I love. Um, I love pushing and challenging myself and seeing if I can accomplish my goals. I hope you do too. That's the only way you can get to the destination you want to be. And so hold me accountable, Work Life Warriors. Um, I'm going to come on Wednesday and do a book report. I'm also going to try to do at least, you know, I read poetry and write poetry, but I um, want to do a poetry review once a month as well. So hold me accountable. Um, I'll let you go and I will probably be hopping on in the next two hours or so for our first stress management um, tip, tool, trick, or technique for the year at noon. So join me for my live at noon. Thank you so much, Work Life Warriors. I'll see you next Sunday. Happy 2019.